I don't know about your weekend, but it was jam-packed with pop culture tea led by none other than Nicki Minaj. <laughs> to my motherfucking goddamn gay attention that the girls are fighting and they have been fighting all motherfucking weekend. Here to report the story live, everybody's favorite, Bob from Channel 8. Nicki Minaj has dropped a new song, Bigfoot. The diss track arrives following a dust-up between her and Megan Thee Stallion following the latter's release of Hiss on Friday. On Minaj's new track, she goes in for the kill, straight up naming Megan in the first verse. This little begging whore talking about Megan's law for a free beat, you can hit Megan raw. Minaj spits. If you a ghost write a party in Megan's jaw, shots thrown, but I still ain't let Megan scar. The song culminates in a spoken word warning, but I'm very serious, Minaj says at the end of the track, whispering the last part of the following line and adding that she has more to say in the second installment. Ho, the things that you've lied about, even pertaining to your mom, you don't want them out, okay? Reporting live from Rolling Stone, Bob from Channel 8. <laughs> Round of gay plies for motherfucking Bob. You ain't missed since 2024 done hit me. Bob is that nigga. Bob is that nigga. Okay, so I think the best way to break this down is to go through the series of events that pertain to your mother. Um, and then we will actually get opinions and you guys can banter about it in the comment section. So in November, there was a headline by a lesser blog that was elicited unto me and I read it and I said that Megan didn't know what the beef was with Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj beef with everybody in the motherfucking game. Well, as of Friday of last week, that ended up being a receipt because in Megan's song, his, she said, bitch don't even know why she mad. I don't even know why she mad in the song while spitting bars and desecrating Nicki Minaj or attempting to desecrate Nicki Minaj, right? <laughs> So we motherfucking popped the receipt on that motherfucking shit on that Friday, okay? That Friday, Meg came out with his, okay? Um, and she dropped the visuals on that Saturday. I actually read that to a T2 because I said it's going to get a little quiet on Saturday. It wasn't quiet. Megan did drop the visuals, but there was no noise being made from the other camp aside from Nicki Minaj going on Station Head. And I had to figure out what Station Head was because I was getting the afterburn on Twitter, okay? Like, I was just getting the audio clips from Twitter. I was like, where? Is this going down? Apparently, Station Head is a new installment to iTunes, uh, where it's like a podcast style of uh, broadcasting oneself. And she was on there for seventy-two hours. Oh! She was on there. She was on there. She was so damn mad, honey. She was mad. She was manic. And coming from somebody who is recovered from being on that bag, she was on that bag. She was on that motherfucking bag, bitch. She was on that bag. That's me. She was on that bag. That's me. Let me smoke crack on my life. Okay, Nikki has since came out and says, I have never touched coke a day in my life. <laughs> and if she was on it, she would be proud about it. Now, can you name anybody that has been proud to be on coke aside from Whitney Houston? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. Ask me no questions like I'm a child. Y'all want to know what I'm doing all the time. I don't give a shit about what you're doing all the time. Yeah. Okay, and Whitney Houston didn't say she was on coke. She said she sprinkled cocaine over her blunts and smoked that shit and was hiding in the motherfucking cake. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> some of her live content when she thought she was killing the game on the on the on the programming and you can tell her unhinged behavior is drug infused. Now I know that's not that mixed Moscato Nikki. I just I just know it's not. I just know it's not. Okay. But to go on 
there for 72 hours and talk about this girl and the things that was coming out of Nikki's mouth was the same things that she released in the song, you know, lying on her dead mama. Uh, apparently she was, I, I don't understand what she was talking about, but we got to find out because we do got the cards, okay? <laughs> we do got the cards. Meg was lying on her dead. Mama said Meg is a train, a, a ran through in the industry or whatever, party in her job because part, she named everybody that Meg has been associated with in a lyrical, unhinged fashion in the song Bigfoot. So anyway, Saturday goes down. Meg drops the visuals for that his song, and I gotta give it to her. That was art, bro. That was that was crazy. That was crazy. visuals are great, okay? And then Nikki uh, has everybody waiting to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, sleep deprived, trying to figure out what she was going to do with that Bigfoot. <sighs> okay, let's first look at the scoreboard real quick. Nicki Minaj, queen of rap, I'll give her that. Yeah, she, she is. There is no Body who is not only a rapper but a cultural phenomenon. Before Nicki Minaj came out, it was all about the titties in the 90s, okay? I think Trina brought forth the ass and Kaya with my neck and my back, but Nicki Minaj changed the culture not only with body shape and the way that women are aesthetically uh, uh, displaying themselves, but have you noticed that the wig culture uplifted from Nicki Minaj? She is more than a rapper, she is a, a phenomenon, she's a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> And I, I had this conversation in the squad the other day. Somebody said Lil' Kim. But see, Lil' Kim wasn't changing the culture. Lil' Kim was just presenting herself in an avant-garde fashion. The girls replicated what Nicki did. And now, uh, because black people are so innovative, we took the same format they used for cancer patients to put them lace front wigs on your head. And now you don't know if Shirley is going to be having a 27-piece today or if service, uh, Shirley's going to have a lace front wig. Nicki Minaj did that. She did that. Megan, Megan has good art behind her raps, but Megan, Megan's not a cultural phenomenon. She's not. She's not. So when you look at the scoreboard of hits, it goes to Nikki. Okay, when Nikki is the best lyricist in the world. Like I've, I've said this aside from Maya Angelou. <laughs> My thighs spread like butterflies in the wind. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what my head is up in. Okay? Because you got to keep in mind, rap is rooted in poetry. And there are some really great poets, but we don't know it because there ain't no beat behind the lyrics that they are putting together. Okay? Um, Nicki Minaj is, is the best lyricist. If you look at the scoreboard, Pink Friday is Pink Friday 2 is platinum. Is, is, double, is it double platinum yet? Her stats outdo Meg all day. Okay? Um... Because of that, I expected a monster verse from Nicki Minaj when it came to Bigfoot, especially because of the manic behavior that you elicited when Megan called you to the carpet. I expected that. I did. I did. But that's not what you gave me. You gave me Takashi Six Nine. That's what you gave me. That's what you gave me. All of that build up and anticipation that you gave, I was I was really hoping that you came spitting, right? But instead, the vibration was like, I'm going to just tap you, little sis. I'm going to tap you. And like I said in that Candid Live video I did from the bedroom, I feel like this was a warning, okay? I feel like Nikki has so much more like soliloquy and metaphors in her mind when it comes to drama, especially fueled by coke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, it felt disappointing to me when I stayed up till midnight to see what the hell you was going to drop. <clears throat> that was my initial assertion. So I slept on it. I woke up and then I listened to it again. And I found myself saying she lied on her dead mama. <laughs> Is she's smart. It's just like her album, Pink Friday 2, didn't make me, didn't make my dick go up upon the first listen. And now I'm like, okay, I'm really feeling this shit. Inversely, I probably would never listen to that Meg song again. It's not that 
the song is bad, but Meg does what Drake does to me. I can listen to his music all the way through, like the album. Kendrick Lamar, too. I can listen to it all the way through and digest it as a piece one time. I don't ever have to go back and listen to that his song, Megan. And Nicki is right in saying that, yeah, you, you got one flow. You got one flow. It, it sounds like every single song on Traumazine. But you got to keep in mind, you know, Megan is also doing the Megan bopping, the popping and stuff. And it's easier to rap like that when you are pulsating like that. You know what I'm saying? This is why she structures it that way. Because when she goes to perform it, she's actually going to move and not just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to my mentor who actually got tried in this melee. Okay. Let me take you back. On Saturday, there was a Barb having a discussion, an open discussion on Twitter. And this Barb has been trolling Mother Erica Badu for a couple of years. This time, Erica picked up the phone and he called her a motherfucking bitch. <laughs> enough for me and my witches to go ahead and teach that one Barbie lesson. And again, this is not a shot to all Barbies, but all Barbies better not come. Okay, you are enchanted. We are enchantresses. You're not gonna win. I mean that to the core of me. I don't know what it is about certain people's fan bases that got them feeling like they can just do and say whatever the hell they want to say. And in the comment section, people are like, oh, he didn't mean it. Oh, he didn't mean it. Oh, he didn't mean it. Well, Erica is in the comment section saying, yes, the motherfuck that child did. And that was all I needed to know. Like, kid? Sweet dreams. <laughs> fucking example, okay? There's there's certain people that have gathered too much respect for you to be that feeble-mindedly blinded enchanted by Nicki Minaj that you're willing to go up in somebody's house, leave a note, and say the barbs did that. Now, I don't know if that was a true thing on Twitter, but I did see that roll down my timeline, but let's have a level of consciousness here. Yes, that is your favorite, but you're acting like your leader. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy as fuck. <laughs> Somebody has to, to wake y'all up. And if it has to be my cauldron and my believers, then so be it. But that's not the point of conversation. And let me be very clear about something, too. I didn't hex that boy, okay? This is social media, okay? I did not go off in the cauldron. I did not hex you. I, I, I warned you. Watch what the fuck you say. Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. Ask me no questions like I'm a child. Y'all want to know what I'm doing all the time. I don't give a shit about what you're doing all the time. Exactly. I got another article on my motherfucking table that said the barbs leaked Megan's grave, her mother's grave, on the internet. Now... It's all fun and games, but desecrating the dead. And and but 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 can 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 you blame their audience when their leader is sitting up here talking about somebody's dead mother in a humorous fashion? The youth think that's okay. That's not okay. That's not okay. That's not okay. Okay. Yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, one of the barbs found the grave site of Megan's mother, and I wouldn't be surprised if the grave is desecrated by the end of the week or if it's not already desecrated. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Now it's all funny games, hee hee ha ha hell. But 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 you 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 fucking with forces, sis. That, that you don't want to fuck with. Now, um, again, if you look at my Candid Live video on Saturday when I was actually discussing uh, the witchcraft beyond, behind what Nicki Minaj was doing on that live video, that's a whole nother school of thought there. But all of these motherfuckers is working some type of craft. And it's just interesting to see how it is affecting people, not on a micro level, but on a macro level, to the point where you will go out and desecrate somebody's mother's grave. I, you know what I look? Celebrity or not, I would sit at that fucking grave site with the AK-47 ready to go to jail. It's no shame. It's no shame. It's no shame. It's no shame. Not to mention the karma. Not to mention the karma that you will receive for doing something like that simply because you are feeble-minded and enchanted by somebody whose music you like. Music is a very powerful thing. But don't have it lose your, your, your spirit or your soul fucking with the wrong one. That's how I'm saying. Be aware of what you do.
You know, be aware of what you're doing. Now, let's bring this back. From a consumer's perspective, I like drama when it ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay, one of my fans on Twitter said this. She said, I like a little drama when it got nothing to do with me. And I can co-sign that. I do. Okay, so watching this, it really made me feel like I was anticipating a music video coming out on 106 in Park in the 90s. It really did. It really did. It really did. I was excited again. I was excited for music. I was excited that Nikki uh, brought forth this energy, even though it's coming from a vow perspective. Uh, but, 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 and, and, honey, she is the epitome of when they go low, we go lower. But that's a Sagittarius for your ass. And she's not gonna stop. She's not gonna stop. She's not gonna stop. My opinion about it is I feel like Meg is going to go dormant. I think she's going to drop music that has absolutely nothing to do with this situation. And Nicki Minaj is going to be waiting to try this bitch. But Nicki Minaj is going to continue to throw shots. She's going to provoke her to where then she can unleash what she has in her back pocket without it being a tap, tap, Bigfoot warning. Okay. But the confusion that you're eliciting, Nicki, it's like now you got these people thinking it's okay to laugh at someone's pain. She was shot in the foot. You saw the blood dripping from her foot in the police video. Okay? I still can't get past you really talking about her dead mama in a chant-like fashion. I, it's, it's, it's a Sagittarius. Oh, it's a Sagittarius. It's Sagittarius. It's Sagittarius. <laughs> That's what it is. And in Aquarius, it really depends on the day, okay? Today, Meg can cry about it, and tomorrow, Tina Snow will put that snow back up Nicki Minaj's nose with another song, and the next thing you know, the girls are going to continue to fight. Um, so, let's let's bring this back to down before we call in Sue Ann. Suzanne, excuse me. Sue Ann is my lawyer, bitch, and I almost had to call her ass last night. <laughs> but, but, but that ain't have nothing to do with what we're talking about today, okay? Uh... November, I read it. We popped a receipt on that motherfucking Friday saying that Meg didn't know what was going on. Apparently, uh, she did know more than what she was letting on because if you listen to the song Hiss, there was a lot of tea that was subliminally spilled. Uh, Nicki Minaj then rebuttals with a coked out rant on a new platform on iTunes called Station Head where she went up there and was just belligerently going off about Meg and, and, and all this stuff in a very entertaining and derogatory fashion. Uh, Meg drops the visuals on Saturday to hits that was really, really well done. Really, really well done. You guys saw this, but she was mocking Nicki Minaj's outfits with her real body in that, and the whole brain reference, it was art. Like, it was just, it was, it was great. Meg came out with some great visuals that backed up a song that I probably would never listen to again. <laughs> There, Nicki Minaj teases that Bigfoot is coming out. I love the metaphor uh, because she already took a shot at her foot, so why back off it? She called her Bigfoot, saying that, uh, talking about Megan Thee Stallion's size, as well as um, she uh, put it in the guise of Gag City to where she has a pink high heel boot standing on what looks like Sasquatch's foot uh, in, in the cover of it. So we all were anticipating this. Uh, I stay up till midnight last night waiting on this. It comes out, and I can't be lying to you. I was disappointed. Uh, um, I, I, I really wanted uh, something uh, a bit more jarring to me, something that would make me want to remix the shit. The beat is hot as fuck, but I, I, I feel like in terms of rap, Meg got it. But in terms of antics and being an entertainer, Nicki Minaj reigns supreme. She entertained the fuck out of me all weekend. Like, it's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. thing. Meg is a rapper. Nicki Minaj now is a cultural phenomenon and entertainer who raps. Uh, as I call in Suzanne, Suzanne uh, let's go ahead and get your opinion in the comment section. get your opinion how much are we missing wendy williams right now oh, oh my god the way when oh my god the way wendy would have this situation so she would dedicate
and a whole purple chair showed up. Oh, how you do that? <laughs> good. It would have been so Ooh. good. Shout out to you, Wendy. <laughs> and I have a Suzanne now in dedication and honor to you. Suzanne, what's your opinion oh. about this? I'm trying to say something so that my phone number doesn't leak on the internet. Um, Very lightly. Y'all can call me. Um, here's the thing. All I can say is the woman who sits on the silver horse, Beyonce, uh huh, is not amused by any of this. Oh no! And both of them not are not all. going to be on the Christmas card <laughs> list this not, year. You saying they're not gonna get one of them boxes that she come out with Ivy? <laughs> they're Martin. not gonna get a box. This year. <laughs> <laughs> the girls are gonna be boxless <laughs> this year. <laughs> you said what day? <laughs> what you just say? I think the girls are going to be boxless this year. I mean, you got to keep, keep in mind, Beyonce stopped referencing Nicki Minaj a long time ago. And when Nicki is in these interviews, she's not saying anything about Beyonce. So I just feel like Beyonce became inaccessible to Nicki um, because she probably foresaw some of this behavior after she worked with her on that Flawless Remix. Now, that's not to say that Nicki doesn't have four bars on Beyonce's record, oh, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? But we haven't seen them do much of anything. And this is probably why. You know, Beyonce has a level of prestige with her and Nikki has a level of coke with her. Okay, so Beyonce overseas still pro pro promoting the movie or whatever. She's sitting down taking care of her babies. Uh, but 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 this right here, okay, just from your perspective, Suzanne, who team are you on in this in totality? Whose team are you on? Team Jesus, Team Soldiers for Christ. <laughs> Listen, listen, I I think this. I believe that Nikki is the queen of rap, right? I think that there is no denying that. I think that nobody else would say that she's not, unless they are, you know, a hater. Right. Her. Yeah, yeah. But I think also as a queen, you have to know your place on the throne, right? And okay. when you're sitting on the throne and you continue to allow people to make you come down from the throne and jest with them, then you become a jester yourself. Ooh. Ooh. So Interesting. For you to allow this to continue to happen when you have already solidified your space is a bit odd to me. Yeah. Like, you're going to always be there. Does it feel like insecurity or she feels like she's about to lose everything? Is that kind of the energy that you're getting? Because why else would the queen who has a queendom, like you said, step off the throne and parlay with people she considers not in her league? I think it's that. I think social media has tricked us into thinking the one that has the most likes and follows and a blog posts is the one that wins. But that's not true. Like, Aretha Franklin died, the Queen of Soul. Mm -hmm. Nobody else took that spot. Nobody, Nobody. else ever take that spot. No, they can't. Right? They it's can't. Was the one. Right, and right. And she just understood that. Like, all this shit here, all these blogs or whatever, it's good for entertainment. But, like, you have a job to do, and your job is to be the queen. And I'll... And then I think about before I let you go in this is the little white girls who found her during Super Bass, right? Yeah. As a black woman proclaiming to be the queen of rap, what you gonna tell that little white girl who was dancing the super bass? You know, what, what you gonna tell her? That it's yeah. okay to go around desecrating graves? Like, I just, I, being that you are that staple in culture, I am worried about the fragile mind of the generation up under us because they think it's okay to call by do a bitch. Yeah. What else do they think is okay because of your actions, Nick? Yeah. Did you see, did, did you see what was it called? Was it called Swarm? Swarms, uh huh. Yeah. Did you see that on um, on um, Amazon? I did. I did. Where the girl was obsessed with uh the the, the, the friend. The ending. So, but 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 you have a point. Well, you yeah. have a point. If you've watched Swarm, this is given that, and it's also given an element of Black Mirrors too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you guys have seen these shows, I suggest that you do. Yeah. Suzanne, everybody, you'll get paid on Friday. Bye. Bless you. <laughs> Okay, well, without further ado, 
I'm going to reference my squad because they had a lot of questions about this story. I just have one question, and I'm going to ask my question first, okay? Because that's going to explain everything else that is uh, in the thrall of this reading. But <laughs> it's time to break this down. Five. All right, Spirit, is it safe for me to read? It wasn't safe before, but I've gotten to a place where now it is safe. Let us proceed. <laughs> Okay, this is talking about it being calculated. Uh, I'm not sure if the girls themselves actually, like Nikki sat down with Meg and they said, I'm gonna try you uh, and then I need you to clap back and just be ready for whatever I'm gonna say. But this is talking about it's facilitated by others. Okay, the flock of tarot cards shows up upright and light chief shows up upright. This is saying that, um, Camps probably said, okay, this is what we're going to do, and I need you to go hard, Meg, because Nikki's going to go hard. Meg is like, are you sure? And 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 she's like, yeah, 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 Nikki going to come, but you got to open it up. And the minute that we give this to Nikki, she's already going to have something. Like, I feel like they are very aware of the chaos that they are causing uh, with one another, and we are just pawns watching it all go down. I really do. <laughs> Now, what I will say is that Nikki did not expect Megan to go as hard as she did. The Atmos Tarot card shows up in reverse. So when Meg's label went to her and said, we need you to go hard, Nikki was like, oh, you know, I'm still the queen of rap. She still loves me. She still honors me, even though we might have had some beef undisclosed behind the scenes. But she's not going to go that hard. She went so hard that it made Nikki put that shit up her nose and do a 72-hour damn station head live. <laughs> so I think that caught her. So it's like, I know that you're coming. I just didn't know that you were going to go like this. This is why we see Nikki kind of be frantic those two days and then very quickly put together the Bigfoot song. Was the Bigfoot song already put together? No, it was not. Never Gag shows up upright. She had a punchline and that was it. That was it. <laughs> It. Let's go back. Spirit, can you tell me where all of this came from? This is talking about collaboration. Well, who the fuck did Meg collaborate with? <laughs> this is this is all spawning from collaborations. Um, with the dark chief card upright, the dark is the first uh, aspect of the card. What that says is that um, something was trying to be blocked or something so okay so so when meg worked with cardi nikki tried to block meg's bag and it didn't work <laughs> so it just became silent for a while and then the labels facilitated the drama on both ends nikki was caught off guard and then she scrambled and we saw her scramble on that live video because bigfoot was nothing more than a live uh, that rhymed, and it, it was a troll move. Now, how does Nikki feel about it now that she's released it? She feels like she's the queen. She feels like she did that. <laughs> how does Meg feel? Meg feels like it's about time somebody, uh, you know, stood up for that book. I feel like Meg feels victimized in real life. I don't feel like she's playing the victim. I feel like she feels like she is a victim. Um, these two cards together, though, would suggest that there could be uh, a gang up or some type of uh, uh, collaboration that that the collaboration in itself will be the clapback. I don't feel like there's going to be like Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, Coyle Ray, and them Doja Cat on the verse slaying the queen. I feel like the fact that a collaboration, and I've spoken of this before. I said I feel like the girls are going to come together um, in a way that is going to be very, very intimidating to Onika Barrage. <laughs> <laughs> but if you pull out and look at this from a entertainment management perspective, this is gold all around. This is gold all around, honey. Okay, everybody talking about you. You done summoned the energy of anticipation. You're in a beef with the quote unquote queen of rap. That's good for you, Megan. If you use it the, if your team uses it the right way, okay. Um, Nikki 
this is kind of good for you too, even though it's showing you in a very derogatory light. And I think you might actually be ruffling the wrong feathers, especially in spirit with the way that you're going about it. But this was the energy we wanted on that Pink Friday 2 album. This is what we wanted, okay? Then you give it to us undone. You weren't ready, okay? That and, and, and that's what the cars are listening to. Uh, is Nikki on that bag? One thousand percent. Do we have proof that she on that bag? One thousand percent. This is happening around my birthday, May of two thousand and twenty-four. And Nikki, I know your manager follows me, manager. Oh, in May, watch who she around and watch them phones because I do feel like they're going to... So. <laughs> okay, um, I, I believe that Nikki makes moves in the industry that are unbeknownst to the general public. Uh, and I feel like she was trying to stop some shit and then Meg kept on going. She kept on going. And 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 uh, it's just interesting, the lies and, 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 the, and, and the guise of truth and everything like that, uh, that that has manifested from this situation. Let's go to the squad and see what the squad is asking. Is Nikki intimidated by Meg? Uh, Kuji Funga upright, not intimidated. It's giving me the vibe of like, I was once bullied right and now that i have a throne i'm going to buck back at everybody <laughs> what really started the beef well we talked about that collaboration started the beef why was nikki arguing with herself for 72 hours straight we just talked about the two co is megan truly unbothered by nikki's antics no she is not look my hand is on my chest meg didn't know she was gonna go that low okay <laughs> Let me say something. Anybody talk about your mother who is deceased, it is going to bother you. I don't give a fuck if you have uh, a boundaries of your walls or as high as uh, Meg's was prior to Nicki Minaj saying that she done fucked everybody in the industry, honey. I mean, you're going to be bothered. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like that a day in my motherfucking life. Somebody sit there talking about that video in my mother. Did Nicki Minaj really think Bigfoot was a good song or was she trolling with this? Uh, you know that she thought she, she thought she killed it. She thought she killed it. <laughs> Will any other rappers that Megan has beef with respond to her diss? Uh, no, everybody's pretty much being a silent observer at this time. I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. Is this all planned? Like Nikki, hey, yeah, we talked about that earlier too. I, I feel like it was planned by both of their camps, but then unexpected things are unfolding, but it's good for business. It's good for business. <laughs> It's good for business. It's good for business. It's good for business. Both of them are fighting demons and is low on self-respect for that poison called attention. Well, that's kind of what the Atmos Tarot card was talking about uh, that I pulled earlier. Um, and the drug called money. They've lost all sense of themselves and it's out of control. That's from Love Bug in the squad. Will Meg apologize? No. But, but this is interesting because I feel like this is going to lead to them collaborating over the summer. <laughs> So, um, Dubé Zoot shows up upright, and upon some recent experiences, that card has a new meaning. It's forthcoming collaboration, forthcoming, um, same time, same space type of energy, if you will. Let's see what else the squad is asking. Uh, boom, 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 refresh. Did Meg get spiritual work done on herself slash Nicki Minaj? Oh, shit. <laughs> This is the devil upright in my tail deck. Both of them are working with witches. Uh, Nicki Minaj is very evident based upon that candid live video that I did last Saturday, if you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know where my lives are going to uh, after I remove them from my uh, profile feed, but you can still comment on them and find them if you have the links to watch them. I talked about how that's some Nicki witchcraft, but I've never really peeked off into Meg that way to see if she's actually a practitioner. I don't feel like she's a practitioner because when I met her and I read her, she was scared out of her mind. <laughs> I feel like if you are in that level of the industry or you have attained that much influence, yeah, you are coercing with uh, uh, people who do know what they're doing. So, yeah, I, I do feel like both parties. I feel like Nikki is actively casting and Meg goes to people to do her bidding. That's what I feel like. <laughs> 
Do they both write any of their own songs? Because I looked at Genius for both diss tracks, and it was a few other people listed as their writer. Uh, Bootstopia shows up upright. Nikki be at home writing her own raps, but I do feel like she runs them through people who then get a writing credit. Does Meg write her own shit? Brandy shows up upright. Meg has the idea, but it's brought forth by a camp of people. That's what I feel, okay? <laughs> I mean, if you listen to his, there are so many cadences in it that you can tell that there are about seven or eight people that have their influence on what Meg was talking about um, in, in, in this. Uh, Nikki, that that was Nikki. That was Nikki, and I feel like Nikki has surrounded herself with yes people who are going to praise her for anything that she do. <laughs> Did Meg really go to someone to make people like her again? LV shows up in reverse, yes. Because now it's the problem. Is it the serpent that Nikki spoke of? Hybrid shows up upright. No, I feel like Nikki is... Uh, manipulating the serpent reference that Meg has elicited for art. See, Meg came out as the serpent to shed the skin of what party put her through and everything that she's gone through in the industry. Nikki is manipulating that and almost in a biblical way, calling her a serpent. Serpent, thou art loose and all of this other stuff. I, I feel like Nikki is being blasphemous and using the reference that Meg meant for good against her. Okay, that's what I feel. Um, let's see. Did French Montana really get hit? Carmen is upright. Yeah, but what he got to do with this? <laughs> did Meg really lie on her dead mama? The Baron shows up upright. She did. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She did. Long, her mom. Did Meg sleep with um her dead mama's man after she died? Ivy Iverson is upright. This is protected by spirit. Give it to me stronger. It was worse than that. <laughs> she tried to wife him up. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! These these questions in the squad. Why was Meg indirect and Nikki a straight shooter? Cause Meg Meg and this okay, let's go back to the camp reference. Meg was influenced by her camp, okay? Nikki was caught off guard. She knew what was going to go down, but she didn't think it was going to be a Venus and Torina's tennis match. And then from that point, I feel like Nikki became unhinged and went for the jugulars. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like, how dare you come at me that hard? That's what the hell went on. Is this the end of Nikki's career, and is there a possible lawsuit due to the behaviors of the barbs? Um, this is not the end of Nikki's career. Um, I am not seeing any lawsuit, but the spirit card is upright. There will be spiritual repercussions when it comes to this behavior. The Phoenix shows up upright, so there's going to be a burst into flames moment that I feel like will manifest in Nicki Minaj's career in March of 2024. This could be dealing with her tour, because while you're sitting up here on live for 72 hours, you need to be auditioning other background dancers because the background dancers that you had quit because you weren't giving them no coins. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, that, 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 in, in totality, let's see, what else, is there anything else going on down here that we can talk about? Is Nikki on that bag because of her husband? No, she was on that bag before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with it, I'm done with it, I'm done with it, I'm done with it. No, 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 I'd rather smell this, uh, I'd rather spray this apple cinnamon damn air freshener like I used to do when I went to school. Just spray the air freshener all over you before I got them read any more of this bullshit. I would love your thoughts and commentary about this. Uh, please render them and, uh, I'll be right back. Oh, <laughs> my